Hello, and welcome to the Wayne State University Fall Semester Commencement Ceremony. My name is David Strauss, and as the Dean of Students, it is my privilege and honor to recognize and celebrate our graduating class of 2020. This year has presented all of us with unprecedented challenges, but our students have shown their warrior strength through their perseverance and dedication. This is no small feat, and their achievements are made all the greater by the difficulties and uncertainties they have endured. I believe there's no limit to what our students can accomplish, and today marks the first of many steps they will take towards securing a brighter future for everyone. On behalf of the Dean of Students Office, the Student Senate, and all the student organizations, let me be the first to congratulate each of our students on this momentous occasion. The confirmation and celebration of Wayne State University's class of 2020. I would now like to introduce our Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Lori Lozon Klebo. Thank you, Dean Strauss. Congratulations to all of you for reaching this day. In spite of these very unusual circumstances, this is a celebration for the entire university. For over 150 years, Wayne State University has anchored the city of Detroit as an engaged and motivated community of scholars. Wayne State is one of the nation's 50 largest public universities with Michigan's most diverse student body. Today, nearly 27,000 students from almost every U.S. state and many countries around the world are pursuing degrees at Wayne State. Each one is earning an education at a nationally ranked research university strengthened by the culture, industry, and the diversity of its urban setting. We believe in the definition of a university as a place where highly motivated people of differing backgrounds and aspirations may pursue both knowledge and personal growth. I know all of you gathered here today have been able to experience all that this great university has to offer. You have grown in knowledge and developed your skills in the fields you have all chosen. You have made us all very proud of you. I know that each of you went through a lot to get to this point, but this moment is not only for you, but also for your families and friends who've made a lot of sacrifices so that you could succeed. There is no such thing as a self-made woman or man. We are all shaped by the influence and examples of everyone around us. Family, friends, faculty, all have helped you get to this day. They are all teachers and mentors in their own way. If a supportive member of your life is with you now, please give them a hug, an air hug, a socially distant elbow bump, or whatever is appropriate to let them know how much you appreciate them. If they're not with you right now, sometime today, give them a call. Let them know how much their support has meant to you. On behalf of the more than 2,600 faculty, academic staff, advisors, the deans of our 13 colleges and schools, and others who have taught you in virtual classrooms, worked with you in labs, guided you in real world settings, and met with you in their offices, we extend our deepest congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Marilyn Kelly, Chair of the University's Board of Governors, who will bring greetings on behalf of the board, Governor Kelly. Greetings to each of you on this very special day. On behalf of the members of the Board of Governors, it's my pleasure to welcome the graduates of the Class of 2020 and give you our deepest and most heartfelt congratulations. This has been a remarkable and challenging year for all of you, and your graduation comes at a time when the world around us is undergoing significant change. But we want your graduation and the tremendous accomplishments you've achieved to get the appropriate recognition they deserve. 
Commencement is the culmination of big dreams and hopes for the future. You've all worked incredibly hard to reach this moment, and you should be proud, as we are, of your accomplishments. Wayne State is an outstanding institution, and today you join more than one quarter of a million alumni who call our university their alma mater. Your dedication and commitment have brought you to this moment and have set the path for your future success. We know the warrior spirit runs strong in each of you, and as this past year has proven, it will guide you well in future endeavors. Congratulations from the Board of Governors and our best wishes to you and to your families on this wonderful milestone. Now, please welcome Linda Beal, President of the Academic Senate and Professor of Law, who will bring greetings on behalf of the faculty. Thank you. And greetings to you, our graduates, and your families and friends who have supported you throughout your time here at Wayne. On behalf of the university's entire faculty and academic staff, some of whom are participating in this virtual commencement and some who could not be here. We all heartily congratulate you on your graduation today, an especially significant milestone in this year of difficulties caused by the global pandemic. You have succeeded through your studies and your research with excellent faculty in your field and with the support of our academic staff, all of whom have invested in your success, both here at the university and in your future life. We hope that you will continue your pursuit of learning, and we look forward to hearing about your next endeavors, your adventures in discovery, and in engaging with the world around you. Please keep in touch with us. You can tweet us, Facebook us, email us, call us. We are eager to know what you are doing in your life. Those messages from our former students gladden our hearts and they make even the toughest days brighter. So once again, congratulations. I and all the faculty who have worked with you in your studies here applaud you and we wish you success in all that you do. Thank you. It is now with distinct pleasure that I introduce Wayne State's 12th president, Dr. M. Roy Wilson. Thank you, Dean Strauss. Greetings, graduates, and congratulations. If we were all in the Fox Theater right now, as we would have preferred, you would have seen the room crowded with all the people so happy to celebrate your success. Parents, siblings, spouses, children, professors, and advisors. So until we can offer you that in-person experience, you have to imagine those crowds smiling and cheering for you now. We are so very proud of you, and it is my honor and privilege to share this moment with you. The class of 2020 will forever hold a special place in Wayne State's history. You've weathered unprecedented challenges over the past nine months because of this pandemic that has altered life as we know it. More than perhaps any other graduating class in our 152 year history, you have proven yourselves as warriors, strong, persistent, creative, adaptable, courageous, and kind. You understand better than perhaps any generation in a very long time, how the unpredictable can suddenly rear up and change our lives. Many of you grew up in a post 9-11 world when you might have turned on the morning news to see planes crashing into skyscrapers. You survived multiple recessions. You have reckoned with a deadly virus that swept the globe and took hundreds of thousands of lives. You have borne witness to a national awakening to the systemic racism that still plagues this country. The class of 2020 has endured all this trauma, but you didn't just endure. Many of you have thrived, finding an inner calling to become social justice activists or healthcare heroes, or simply more thoughtful, better informed neighbors and citizens in your communities. The world is unpredictable. 
Life is unpredictable. This will never change. You, however, have changed. I wonder if you realize just how much you've changed since you first arrived on this campus. You are better equipped to face that world and thrive and make it a better place because of your time here at Wayne State University. You've learned from the finest faculty who have stretched your intellects and challenged you to push yourself further than you ever have before. You've worked incredibly hard to the point of exhaustion. And by living and learning in the heart of Detroit, you have learned what it means to be a compassionate and engaged member of your community. Industry, intelligence, integrity. These are the words engraved in the Wayne State University seal. And those are the gifts you carry with you as you enter the next chapter of your lives. It may be hard to see in such dark times, but even now, incredible opportunities will present themselves. And because of your time at Wayne State, you are ready to take advantage of them. Louis Pasteur once observed, chance favors the prepared mind. Each of you is prepared for whatever life may bring. And for this reason, I am confident for our shared future in America. Congratulations once again, class of 2020. You are warriors in name and spirit, and I wish you nothing but the very best of life. Thank you, President Wilson. Now we begin the traditional part of the ceremony, the formal acknowledgement of the candidates for degrees and the conferring of those degrees. I would like to ask Provost Klebo to join us to present the candidates. Mr. President, over 3,100 students were eligible and applied to graduate during the 2020 spring, summer, and fall semesters from our 13 schools and colleges. These candidates will now be acknowledged for their degrees by the Dean. From the College of Engineering, the Master and Bachelor degree candidates will be presented by Dean Farshad Fatui. Dean Fatui. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the Faculty of the College of Engineering, I have the honor to acknowledge these candidates for the degrees as listed in the commencement program book. Ladies and gentlemen, now the most solemn moment of commencement as the President confers the degrees. Mr. President. The authority to confer each of these degrees is vested in the Board of Governors of Wayne State University by the people of the state of Michigan under the Constitution of the state. This authority is delegated to the President by the Board. Each of these degrees is granted on the recommendation of the faculty of the university. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors and upon the recommendation of the respective faculties, I do hereby confer upon you the degree for which the faculties have recommended you, and I admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. Congratulations. Thank you, President Wilson. For all those who are with us today, please join me in congratulating all of the graduates for their efforts and accomplishments. Back to you, Dean Strauss. Thank you, Provost Klebo. I would now like to welcome Dean Fatui back to address the graduates from the College of Engineering and to introduce their speaker. On behalf of the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of the College of Engineering, I would like to congratulate you for reaching the end of your educational journey at Wayne State. We wish that we could be together in person to celebrate, but since we cannot, we want to make sure you know we are proud of all that you have achieved. You pursued entrepreneurial dreams, made new discoveries in the labs, and learned how to be successful in a complex field. You opened yourself up to new culture, understood the value of collaboration and teamwork, laid the groundwork for your careers, and contributed to the betterment of your communities. We hope that your experience at Wayne State was one that will take you to great heights 
whether that would be in industry, research, or academia. Who knows, you may even decide to stick around or come back in the near future for your next advanced degree. Whatever you do next, stay in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and keep up with and participate in the continued growth of our college. Congratulations and best wishes as you join cohort of 30,000 living alumni from the Wayne State University College of Engineering. It is now my pleasure to introduce Sandus Zawani. Sandus Zawani is graduating with a bachelor's in electrical engineering. She is alumna of Plymouth High School in Canton, Michigan, and began her journey through Wayne State in 2016. During her time at Wayne State University, Sandus was heavily involved in the Society of Women Engineers, serving in variety of, variety of leadership roles, including a one-year term as a president, and sharing her passion for engineering and local high school students as she believes in the value of developing the pipeline for future graduation of engineers. She excelled in the classroom, maintained a regular presence on the College of Engineering Dean's List. Her summers were spent developing her skills in industry-based internship at Ford Motor Company and Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. During these rotations, Sandus worked on various vehicles lineup and electrification technologies. Sandus' professional objective is to make people's lives better by developing transportation technologies that inspire and connect the communities in which we live and work globally. Please welcome Sandus. Thank you, Dean, for the introduction. Before celebrating this milestone, I would like to take a moment to address our family, friends, professors, and mentors for being a part of this journey. Truly, today's celebration would not be as monumental if it weren't for your collective encouragement and support which you provided that motivated us until the end. Now to the class of 2020, congratulations. Graduation celebrates a culmination of failure and success, discouragement and motivation, and years of hard work. And now we are here, or there, or wherever you're watching us from. You deserve the celebration, even if it comes at a time of chaotic transitions. Our last year of university and first experience with Zoom was anything but how our freshmen selves would have envisioned our last stride of undergrad. Right as degree works reports higher than a 90% completion, right as we are learning how to negotiate a salary, and right when the next chapter of our lives felt closer than ever before, everything changed in the least conventional way. No email contained all the answers. Quick transitions were established, and our classes adapted virtual learning. The unique opportunities promised to us by the thriving engineering industry which drew us to study here were no longer guaranteed, and we didn't understand what the impact of these changes were on our education and career. But engineering students didn't dwell or wallow in self-pity and despair, at least not here at Wayne State. We studied the situation and identified a problem. The critical shortage of PPE for frontline workers of the pandemic was a global crisis, and Detroit was no exception. The College of Engineering student organizations began circulating job applications for students to help build masks at local OEM plants and other students put to use their 3D printers and began printing, assembling, and delivering face shields that would be donated to the local hospitals. And even the faculty and master's students joined the cause and donated the extra PPE from their labs. I know what you may be thinking. These are insignificant applications of the degree that we are celebrating today, but I'd like to argue otherwise. You see, engineering isn't solely defined by creating a spaceship that can travel to other galaxies or achieving fully autonomous driving. Rather, it is about taking on projects both big and small to serve and better our society. Our efforts weren't motivated by a passing grade from a professor or overtime pay. We simply understood our role as global citizens and our ability to make a difference. Even before taking our oath of obligation and receiving our iron rings, the class of 2020 has proven that it understands its responsibility to innovate and use our knowledge in applied science and mathematics to better mankind. We have already overcome the steepest learning curve there is, and that's getting an engineering degree. Our future is filled with uncertainty, and the world that we are stepping into is unfamiliar to us all. 
and the way we navigate the next chapter of our lives will be radically different than anything we prepared for, but the learning curves to come will be embraced. The world now more than ever needs innovative problem solvers capable of handling the development of our constantly changing world, and I can think of no better group to fill that role than the 2020 class of Wayne State's College of Engineering. In the face of uncertainty, and especially now, we are ready, and I have full confidence in the success of the class of 2020, and I wish you all the possibility in the world. Congratulations, graduates. It is now my pleasure to introduce Jim Anderson, our special guest speaker today. Jim Anderson has never taken It Can't Be Done for an answer. In 1977, when Cadillac was told, that a particular marketing problem couldn't be done with current technology, Jim invented a way to solve the problem and founded Urban Science to deliver the solution. Focused on supporting the needs of the sales and marketing function of automotive industry, Urban Science leverages a scientific methodology to help sell more vehicles, improve profitability, and increase customer loyalty. Today, Jim serves as president and CEO and sets the strategic directions across the 21 global offices and over 800 employees. By applying his entrepreneurial spirit and analytical mindset to every obstacle he faced, Jim has made a career out of seeking out and solving the seamless unsolvable. He created a vision for urban science, a world where science and technology combined with entrepreneurial spirit to create opportunities and make the world a better place to live. This vision continues to drive him to give back to community and educational organizations that share his can-do attitude, including endowments to the Rehabilitation Institute of Michigan to build a spinal cord injury program and to Wayne State University to develop an engineering venture program to train and encourage engineering students to invent solutions to real world problems and take those solutions to market through new business. From raising money to giving money to actually developing products that enhance people's lives, urban science makes community responsibility part of their mission. You will find Mr. Anderson and his company making a difference all around the world. Jim has been a recipient of several awards, including the Horak H. Rackham Humanitarian Award recipient in 2017, the Ernest & Young Entrepreneur of the Year in 2002, and the Cranes Salute to Entrepreneurs in 2010, honoring companies committed to growth and innovation. Please welcome Jim Anderson. Thank you for those kind words, Dean Fatui, and thank you for inviting me to speak today. About 54 years ago for my bachelor's degree, and then again four years later for my master's degree, I was sitting in an audience of Wayne State engineering students about to graduate like you are today. Not knowing what the future would bring, I couldn't help wondering whether I made the right choice to become an engineer, and second, to get my degrees from Wayne State. Today, I think I am one of the luckiest guys on earth because I chose engineering as my profession and I chose Wayne State as my school of choice to earn my engineering degrees. I know with certainty that had I chosen any other university or degree, my life would have been much, much different than it is today. Why? Because the combination of events that led to the creation of urban science including, but not limited to, Wayne State's proximity to my soon-to-be-discovered automobile manufacturing clients would make servicing those clients possible. After graduating high school, I could not afford to go away to college, so I worked part-time in a hardware store for two years while attending Port Huron Junior College. Then I chose Wayne State in part because I needed a job to continue pursuing my degree and jobs were more plentiful in Detroit. I received my Bachelor's of Science in Civil Engineering in 1966 
and my master's of science in civil engineering in 1970. I was working on my PhD degree when an opportunity arose that I never expected but could not decline. The opportunity was high risk, but things worked out okay. My PhD graduate work involved computer simulation of air and water pollutant concentrations in the air and water around Detroit as they exited smokestacks and sewer pipes. The models produced large quantities of pollutant concentration data around the point sources discharging the pollutants. The best way to analyze the simulated pollutant concentration data as it dispersed into the environment was pollutant isochrone maps overlain on a geographic map of the area downwind or downstream from the point sources. Unfortunately, we didn't have Google Earth, digitized road networks, PCs, graphic screens, computer time sharing, laser printers, and a lot of other stuff taken for granted today. A cloud was something you looked at in the sky. Computers got their instructions from punch cards and operated in batch mode. We were lucky to get two runs per day. Those were the good old days. Why am I telling you this? Because opportunity knocked on my door around 1977 that caused a change in my life that no one could have ever predicted would occur. A student in the business school heard me speak about using a computer to draw maps illustrating pollutant concentrations in the air around Detroit and in the Detroit River. After graduating from the business school, she went to work for one of the car companies in Detroit, which happened to be a short distance from my office at Wayne State. Her job was to create maps illustrating luxury car buyer locations in large metropolitan markets like Chicago for the purpose of evaluating brand and dealership performance selling their brand vehicles. Back then, they manually placed dots on a paper road map representing new luxury vehicle buyers and their geographic relationship to the luxury automobile dealers in the marketplace. There were 36,000 luxury car buyers in Chicago that year. So she was assigned the task of manually placing 36,000 dots on a large road map of Chicago. It took three weeks to make one map and another week for her thumb to recover. She asked her boss why they were not using a computer to do this laborious task. He replied they had talked to several technology and data companies but were told it could not be done. She replied, I don't know who you have been talking to, but I know someone who can make those maps with a computer. That three letter dirty word, N-O-T, is why I am here today talking to you. Her boss replied, I want to meet that person right now. The rest is history. By the way, I consider that day one of the luckiest days of my life. We took 16 hours to produce the first map on a pen plotter using liquid ink. That was in comparison to three weeks of manual labor. We got $500 for one map. Today we do the same task, only better, in three to five seconds. With enough volume, map costs are and can be as low as $5. Urban science was born and running hard. Today we are an 800 person company with 18 offices around the world, averaging around $200 million in annual revenue. 
What are the lessons I want you to take away today? Well, first, engineers are trained to solve problems that have not been solved before. Our digital world creates far more data than anyone knows how to mine and extract all the useful nuggets. Keep your eyes and ears open for opportunities to turn data into dollars through analytics, which you are uniquely qualified to do. So when your boss asks you to solve a problem that hasn't been solved before, don't let that three-letter word spelled N-O-T get in the way of advancing your career. Remember, you are an engineer that has been trained to solve problems that have not been solved before. Seek and then solve recurring data analytics problems. Convert the solution to computer code. Put the code to work up in the cloud. Consider becoming an entrepreneur, starting a business, and making your material dreams come true. Urban Science was started with $1,000 44 years ago. There were two employees. Abraham Lincoln once said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. You are trained to solve problems that have not been solved before and invent the future in the process. But you will need an attitude. I call it the can-do attitude. At Urban Science, when someone tells me they could solve a problem we have, but, or if, I stop listening. I don't need to hear the excuses. However, when someone tells me they can solve a problem and then stops talking, I recognize the can-do attitude and know they will figure out how to solve the problem. Why? because that is what engineers are trained to do, solve problems that haven't been solved before. That is what you are uniquely trained to do. Cars were soon drive themselves, thanks to engineers. We couldn't fly between cities until engineers invented airplanes. We are now talking about flying to Mars and coming back. Certainly in your lifetime, and I hope in mine too. When I was a kid, TV had not been invented. Instead, we read comic books. Back then, there was a detective series of comic books named Dick Tracy. He communicated with police headquarters by talking to his watch that transmitted the conversation to police headquarters. We all thought that was cool but nothing more than science fiction. Today, it's reality. I have my Apple Watch to prove it. Henry Ford I said, it won't matter whether you think you can or you think you can't. You're right. You are entering the world of work in the early stages of the information age. Data is the fuel. Be someone who thinks they can. That is what my Wayne State engineering degree did for me and helped made my dreams come true. I believe it can do much more for you too in the rapidly expanding digital world we live in today. My last advice for you is from a guy named Ben Franklin who said the only thing people have learned from history is people don't learn from history. Don't waste your time reinventing the wheel. Solve problems that haven't been solved before. Convert the solution to a product. Become an entrepreneur and make your dreams come true. Congratulations to all of you. Good luck in whatever you choose to do, but do it well and with the can-do attitude. You are trained to do what others say cannot be done. Invent your future, and for those of you willing to take a risk, start a business, leverage your analytical problem-solving skills, invent the future, 
make the world a better place, and make all your dreams come true. Thanks for listening. I look forward to reading about you on the internet. Thank you. Congratulations, graduates. Go ahead and cheer. Good job. And now, I would like to introduce Peter Caborn, Associate Vice President for Alumni Relations and Advancement Services and Executive Director of the Wayne State University Alumni Association to welcome the university's newest alumni. Please welcome Mr. Caborn. Congratulations, graduates. You arrived at Wayne State as students, but you leave as so much more. You're powerful examples of success. You've demonstrated that with grit, opportunity, and ambition, anything is possible. When the world drastically changed this year, you were nimble, flexible, you pivoted, and you stayed focused to the finish. It was no easy feat, and that makes reaching this point of graduation even more significant. As you move your tassel from student to a graduate of the class of 2020, you also move into the Wayne State alumni community, and we are honored to have you. You now join more than 283,000 people who've also succeeded and continue to succeed. There are Wayne State alumni in every corner of Detroit, in every part of Michigan, all across the country, and all around the world. No matter where your journey takes you, you will find a Wayne State connection. We also hope that you will stay connected with us. We offer many programs and opportunities for our alumni, including ways to give back. Perhaps you're interested in mentoring students who are following in your footsteps or connecting with alumni in your career field. The Alumni Association offers this and much more. And we wanna know what you're doing too. So please share your accomplishments and your updates with us as you achieve milestones throughout your journey. Keep in touch with us and view everything that we have to offer you via our website at alumni.wayne.edu. On behalf of the Alumni Association, congratulations again on your accomplishments. We can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you, Mr. Caborn. Thank you, parents, families, friends, and most of all, graduates, for joining us in this wonderful celebration. And once again, congratulations, class of 2020. <laughs>